how would you fix a case like this? In other words, how to correct an incomplete and complete transposed canine within 14 months. The patient came in with incomplete transposition of the upper right canine and complete transposition where both the crown and the root of the left canine was transposed. The patient had a straight profile with smaller class 1, no crowding on both arches. Well, what would be your treatment plan? So based on the extraction decision table, the straight profile and non-crowding indicated that non-extraction is the way to go, which also means that we needed to try to align the impacted canine into the arch. So there are three keys to this treatment. Key number one is the surgical design of the transposition canine. The flap design we used was Vista technique and the mechanics for the transpose canine is by using IZC screws with 3D level arms. So this video shows how the Vista technique was performed. The first vertical incision was made to expose the crown, and the second vertical incision was measured by pressing the 3D level arm to see where the power chain exits. And the mechanics we needed for the transpose canine is in three directions, which were backward, outward, and then downward force. In order for the transpose canine to pass over the lateral incisors. So you can scan this QR code for detailed explanation of the Vista technique and 3D level arm that we had discussed before in the previous video. Back to the case. Three months after the surgery, we activate the 3D level arm with the three jaw pliers. In this way, we can simply activate the 3D level arm within a second. By using the three jaw pliers, we bend the wire in an outward and backward direction to provide more force to the transposed canines. And five months later, we remove the 3D level arm since the canine has erupted through the gum. We change it to power chain only for horizontal backward force. And remember, do not bound the lateral incisors. Why? Because by not bounding the lateral incisors, allow it to move freely out of the path of canine retraction, thus reducing the risk of root resorption. Key number two is the torque control of the transpose lateral incisors and canines. The lotal bracket was selected for labial root movement of the lateral incisor. And instead of bounding the bracket aligned with the root axis, the bracket was bounded with 15 degree over correction to create mesial root movement. And the open core spring were inserted between the lateral incisors and first premolar to create massive tipping force to the crown of the lateral incisor. Thus, the root and the crown massive movement result in the bodily movement of the lateral incisors. So, the effect of the massive crown and root movement of the lateral incisors can be observed in the 7 months and 18 months panoramic. The same principle of 15 degree overcorrection were applied when bounding the canines to provide distal root movement. And the button was bounded on the lingual surface of the canine to prevent the canine from clockwise rotation. And it also provides additional distal pulling force to the canine. So from the treatment progression of 18 months to 38 months, it showed the torque control of the canines were done with a simple technique of overcorrection bounding. Key number three, gingival recession. Gingival recession is common to observe when treating transposed teeth, mainly due to insufficient buccolingual alveolar bone width. Since the alveolar bone was previously maintained by the deciduous canine, whose roots were very thin. Thus, 
the bone width was not enough to support the permanent canine to move back into position. So to re-establish the keratinized tissue, Vista was performed. The connective tissue graft is harvested away from the palatal rugae due to the irregular mucosa elevation for aesthetic concern. And the excision only extended to the mesial of the first molar to avoid cutting the greater palatine artery. And the connective tissue graft was then placed within the terminal with 6-0 nylon suture to secure it. So the result after the first Vista surgery, well, was unsatisfactory. It's mainly due to the scar tissue around the recession area and the lack of the buccal bones and the thin gingival biotype of the patient. So it's very important that we need to inform the patient prior to starting the Vista treatment that the second surgery might be necessary. Although the initial surgery didn't meet expectation, it still holds value. It creates a thicker mucosa base, which enhances the prognosis of the second Vista procedures. So the second Vista surgery was performed three months after, and the result remained stable after four years of follow-up. So if you are interested in this method, all the details can be found in Perio Clinica. You can scan this QR code to get English version of this article. And for Spanish and French version, I will link in the description box. And if you are interested in more application of screw with impaction treatment, I highly recommend this interactive ebook. In chapter three, we demonstrate six cases of impaction treatment with mini screws. And not only for impaction, this ebook contains everything you need to know about mini screw in your orthodontic practice. Thank you.